All right, it is noon, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to today's Dino Lunch and Learn session. This is a new event series that is focused on product features and use cases for Dino in your school and in your classroom. So today we are going to be talking about co-teaching with Dino. Like I said, these are going to be monthly recurring events on the last week of every month. So keep an eye out for our next one at the end of May. Today we're gonna to be talking about all about co-teaching with Dino with Casey Higgs from our school success team. If you are not a current Dino user and are unfamiliar with Dino, Dino is a leader in the device monitoring space and we have been a leader in the classroom management space for about a decade now. Um, our classroom management tool enables teachers to achieve real-time monitoring during class, gain visibility of student screens, block off-task activity, and review all of those device activity metrics after the fact. We just recently launched our device impact measurement module, which gives administrators and tech coaches a glimpse into complete device usage data throughout their school and district, and really get that source of truth for how device technology and applications are being used to inform investments and understand where budgets are going. Um, I encourage all of you throughout this event today, whether you are a current Dino user or you are new to Dino, to ask questions in the Q&A. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, specifically about co-teaching or Dino more broadly, we're happy to answer them and we will designate some time at the end of the event to talk through those questions and answer any questions that you have. So for today's event, you are probably familiar with myself. I'm Tiara Lustig, Marketing Manager here at Dino. I host all of our digital events. And today I'm joined by Casey Higgs, who is our School Success Director. And she is, if you are a current user, probably a familiar face because she is all, all about our chat and support. And Casey, welcome. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks, Tiara. Um, so just quickly a little bit about, about myself. Um, I've been at Dino for almost four years now, and as Tara mentioned, my role is all about helping schools that use Dino find success. So that usually includes onboarding and training, as well as customer support, product documentation, etc. So it makes sense that I'm here today, and I'm excited to talk about the product, um, but today specifically, you know, as it relates to co-teaching. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that the whole concept of the classroom, you know, has continued to change. Today, some students are remote, some are learning back in the classroom, some students switch between the two, you know, etc. But regardless, the use of technology in the classroom is only increasing. And all of these devices, all this technology is really, really distracting for students, which of course creates frustration for the teachers who have more on their plates than ever trying to manage hybrid classrooms. So I think that, you know, co-teaching has always been important for K-12 because it brings together educators from different backgrounds with different levels of expertise, talents, strengths, et cetera. But co-teaching is even more important now because of all the benefits it provides both teachers and students in this now, you know, really tech-heavy classroom. So let's take a look at some of those benefits specifically. Um, on the educator side, you know, co-teaching first and foremost um, offers shared reflect, or excuse me, shared responsibility and flexibility in the classroom. So, you know, whether that's just another set of eyes or some more hands-on help, the benefits of co-teaching usually can be immediately felt. Um, you know, it makes sense. More teachers means more time to engage with students and address their needs. Originally, co-teaching looked like this, right? You had a special education teacher that was supporting a general education teacher, but they were in the same classroom physically. Um, today, a co-teacher is just as likely, if not more likely, to be a tech coach, um, a gifted and talented teacher, a, a student teacher, a supervisor, even a principal. Um, really, there are a lot of different co-teaching models out there, and we'll definitely talk about some of those in just a few minutes. But I think it's important to call out, too, that there's probably no one-size-fits-all solution for co-teaching, but that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, you can figure out what works with, for you and for your co-teacher or co-teachers. 
Um, and that probably depends a lot on your relationship with your co-teachers. It probably depends a lot too on your classroom and your students, um, which can all change. Um, speaking of the students, there are just as many benefits um, of co-teaching for the students. Um, first and foremost, co-teaching improves that teacher to student ratio, which immediately lends itself to more individualized instruction and an increase in student engagement. So despite all of this increase in technology and tech tools in the classroom, um, having a co-teacher can help students stay that much more focused because you're helping to create a more focused environment. Um, and that really helps everyone get to know each other better. The educators with the students and the students with the teachers, et cetera, which is again, all the more challenging with all the technology that we're using. And especially if the classroom is remote, right? You're not physically there interacting with each other. So the more the merrier, I think is really um, how co-teaching works. So let's talk about co-teaching now in Dino. Um, I think it was just last year, Dino launched the ability to assign more than one co-teacher to a class. And it's been a hugely popular feature ever since, especially with the introduction of remote learning. So co-teaching in Dino means that um, there's an unlimited number of teachers that can be assigned to and monitor the same class at the same time. Of course, whether those teachers are actually teaching in person, remotely, or both. And um, Tiara mentioned earlier Dino's offerings. Well, co-teaching is part specifically of our classroom management offering. And Dino definitely supports pretty much any type of co-teaching structure that you might use. Of course, the most popular being the one that I mentioned, that traditional model where you've got one teacher teaching and the other teacher assisting. So again, in Dino, not only can multiple teachers monitor the same class at the same time, but they can also engage with those students by asking questions, sending a message, et cetera, and then even using blocking plans to help get, keep those students on task. So more specifically, um, within Dino, a teacher or a co-teacher must actually be assigned to a class in order to monitor the devices of the students within that class, on that class roster. And then of course, in order to have access to that class's class history data. One thing I do wanna clarify is that each student can only be monitored in one class at a time. But again, they can be monitored by multiple teachers at a time, so long as all of those teachers are assigned to the same class. And co-teachers can be assigned to a class in a few different ways. Primarily, they're getting assigned via the SysData import. That's something that's happening nightly. It's something that your admins set up and manage for you, so no need to worry about that. But co-teachers can also be assigned manually, and we're gonna take a look at that now. So if you're already assigned as the teacher of a class, right, you've got all of these classes there on your My Classes dashboard, you can manually add other teachers to any of your classes pretty easily. Each of your classes has an edit hyperlink and you will simply click on that. The edit class page then appears and you'll notice there's a manage teacher section. That's where you'll click on the add teacher button and a search field will appear, which you'll use to search for and then select whatever the name of the teacher is that you want to add to that class. Um, in that video example that just played, we um, were assigning teachers to a study hall class. A lot of Dino customers use co-teaching for study hall and detention, right? Um, you might have many different teachers that at any one time need to monitor the same set of students on different days. So there's really no need to edit the class every time, right? You would simply assign multiple teachers to that class all the potential teachers to that class, and then allow each teacher to monitor that group of students as needed. Um, and then any teacher can actually, um, if you're assigned to a class, you'll be able to see what other teachers are also assigned to that class in the same edit class modal. The manage teacher section is always going to display the list of teachers assigned to that class. And if there's a red X next to the teacher's name, that means you can also remove that teacher from the list of co-teachers. 
So that was how to add a co-teacher as a teacher. Now let's look at how other teach, or excuse me, how to add yourself to a class if you're a tech coach or an administrator. So if you're a tech coach or an admin in Dino, you can assign yourself or you can assign, of course, other teachers to a class through the admin settings. So for tech coaches specifically, you can add yourself to any class within any of the schools that you're assigned to. Um, for administrators, though, you can add yourself to any class within your district. Um, and here's how that works, as you probably just saw in the video. Um, from the admin settings, which you would access via that gear icon in the upper right hand corner, you'd click on the classes tab. And then you would search for the name of the class that you're wanting to edit and click the little pencil icon um, to bring up this edit class modal. There, there's a teacher section that you'll use to search for and select your name to add it to that class and then click save. Now, once you've saved it, that class then will appear on your My Classes dashboard, just like any of your other class assignments. And in this example, we, um, we're looking at the co-teacher model where there's one teacher teaching, um, but the other one is simply observing. So this structure of co-teaching really is ideal for administrators. Um, those that are probably evaluating a class, right? They can simply observe what's going on in the class without actually disrupting the teacher or the students or any of the instruction. Um, you know, to that point, when there is more than one teacher assigned to a class in Dino, you don't wanna disrupt each other. And the Dino workflow for starting and ending co-taught monitoring sessions makes that pretty seamless. So again, when more than one teacher is assigned to a class, all of those teachers can monitor that same class at the same time. The difference comes into play depending on what order you are in the teachers that start, or excuse me, that start or join the monitoring session. So if you're the first teacher to start the monitoring session, you'll click the button that says start monitoring. Um, but for the second teacher or the third teacher, fourth, etc., you'll actually see the join button instead of the start monitoring button. So that's what you would click to join the active monitoring session that's already in place. And then the same thing for leaving a monitoring session. If you need to jump out, you don't want to disrupt the other teacher and it's no big deal. You don't have to. You click the end monitoring button the same way you always would. But if there's another co-teacher that's still teaching that class, this little pop-up here appears, giving you the option to end the monitoring session entirely for all the co-teachers involved, or simply to let you leave the monitoring session without disrupting everything else. So it is pretty seamless. Oops, I somehow just went backwards. <laughs> okay, there we go, sorry. Um, so the seamless starting or joining and, and leaving a class is also really helpful um, in case you're ever in a troubleshooting situation. So another example that we have with co-teaching is if you have a tech admin or someone from your IT team joining your class one day, um, you would add them as a co-teacher just like you would add anyone else. Um, and then they would join, say, for example, if you're trying out a new software or something for the first time, right? We were just saying how much the classroom is changing. There's technology um, being added every single day, it seems, all these different tech tools. So it might be a good idea to have someone from your tech team join class when you are trying out something new for the first time. So that way, of course, you, the teacher, can actually focus on teaching, focus on the instruction. And then the tech admin would be able to work with students on an as-needed basis for any issues that might, that, you know, that might come across. Um, another example here that's helpful is for, for behavior management. So again, you've got one teacher focused on teaching the whole class for the most part. She's focused solely on instruction. And then you've got another teacher who is joining the class as needed um, to really focus on individual students that might need a little bit extra help staying on task. So I mentioned earlier how Dino's co-teaching functionality supports several different types of co-teaching models. Um, well, it's also true that uh, Dino offers other features that can enhance co-teaching. We just talked about joining and leaving sessions pretty seamlessly, but let's look at another example. 
excuse me, another example of co-teaching. Um, and that's the hybrid classroom. So something really relevant for today, right? You might have a teacher physically in the classroom with some students, but then other students are working from home. I've actually heard um, a few stories about students in these situations. Um, students that for some reason or another, whether maybe a parent is sick still or not, um, but for some reason or another, the student has opted out of returning to the classroom with the rest of their schoolmates. Um, some of these students are actually beginning to suffer socially um, and are less engaged in the classroom because of it. So, so they're learning remotely, right? But they've got friends that are physically in the classroom with the teacher. Well, it's harder for those remote kids to participate because first of all, they probably just can't hear as well, right? Things are going on physically in the classroom that they're not a part of. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, they might raise their hand to participate in the class instruction, but you've got a teacher who's forced to juggle the students in front of her as well as those online. So she's probably not gonna see the students that are online raising their hand as much. Therefore, they're engaging less because they simply can't hear as well, they're not getting picked on, et cetera. And so again, they're suffering socially. They're not a part of things. So imagine if you could bring a co-teacher into the hybrid classroom. You know, he or she wouldn't actually have to be physically in the classroom, um, but for the teacher that is there physically, that teacher then could be the primary one focused on the students that are in front of her. And then a second teacher, whether present or remote, could focus on the remote learners. I mean, it would make an absolutely massive difference in student engagement. So again, the benefits of co-teaching are just numerous. And with Dino, we've got features that really help enhance that whole experience. One of those other features is segmented blocking plans, as you can see here on the screen. So each teacher in a co-teaching situation can customize the blocking plan that they're using um, for their particular group of students, right? So when you're enforcing a blocking or a segmented blocking plan, you're really enforcing two blocking plans at once. Um, also, when a segmented blocking plan is enforced, it visually divides the monitoring screen. So you've got group A at the top and group B at the bottom. So that also makes the identification of those two different groups easier in a co-teaching situation. And um, you know, similar to the hybrid classroom that we were just talking about, there's another co-teaching structure that would also work really well for segmented blocking plans. Um, and that's parallel teaching or station teaching is, is another similar example. So basically the classroom is getting broken down into smaller groups. Um, with both parallel teaching and station teaching, the idea is that each teacher is presenting the same content to students. They're just doing so to smaller groups of students. So both, um, both station teaching and parallel teaching are usually used um, when you're presenting more complex topics. So you're giving your students a chance to learn about something that is maybe a little bit more challenging in a different way with different teachers, you know, from more than one perspective, et cetera. And again, segmented blocking plans can be helpful in those situations too. So each, each teacher can kind of do their own thing, but at the same time. So finally, um, and, you know, another teacher that, or excuse me, another feature that can support co-teaching within Dino is the class history data. So after a monitoring session has ended, any of the co-teachers that are assigned to a given class in Dino will be able to access that class's class history data, right? This is all the student device activity that's been tracked during the monitoring session. Um, and this is especially helpful if one of those teachers might be out sick one day. So whether you're actually using a substitute teacher or not, um, if for some reason a teacher is out of the classroom, as long as one of the other teachers is monitoring, he or she is not going to miss a thing just because they're out sick. All of that student activity data that's being recorded during the monitoring session is going to be available later. And again, it doesn't have to be right away. With Dino class history, you can look back at data from monitoring sessions as early as the start of the class, 
you know, the start of the school year. As long as that class exists in Dino, you'll be able to access its class history data. So again, you're not missing a thing, and that's the idea. We've got that whole that whole paper trail though there for you. Um, actually, I want to tell a quick story. This is somewhat related to co-teaching, but it's again about the benefits of the class history data and teachers not missing a thing. Um, Tierra and I have been at many education technology events throughout the US. And without a doubt, every single event, we have dyno teachers that come by the booth that are actively monitoring their students, right? They're not even physically in the classroom. There's a substitute teacher that's physically in the classroom with the kids. But for some reason or another, the teacher doesn't want to deal with sharing their login or something like that with the substitute, right? So they're simply monitoring while they're walking through the conference hall and looking at vendors or while they're in a session learning about something else cool in education technology. Um, it's just really cool. I love to hear those kinds of stories. Um, so final thing I want to cover is Dino support. You know, we've talked about now how co-teaching works in Dino. We talked about a bunch of different examples of co-teaching and how Dino really supports any of those models. Um, let's talk about next steps. How can you implement all of this stuff? Um, again, your co-teaching style is going to depend on your relationship with your co-teachers and how your classroom is set up. So as you kind of figure that out, it's probably going to be a little bit of trial and error. Um, reach out and let us know how it's going. We might have some additional tips to share, et cetera, but um, our team, our school success team is here to help you use the Dino product to its fullest. So no matter what co-teaching style you're using, no matter what feature you might be trying out, I really encourage you to reach out to us and let us know how it's going. Of course, you can ask questions, you can give us feedback. Um, I just wanna point out that we are so much more than just a standard troubleshooting resource. Um, we really, really, really do want to hear from you. Our CEO always says, you know, any feedback is a gift. So whether it's a question, whether it's just an idea, please let us know. Um, again, we love, love to hear from you. So that's really all I've got for you today. I know it's short, but again, as Tiara mentioned, that's the idea of these sessions, just to really focus on different portions of the Dino product and how you all can use them to their fullest. Um, so I will go ahead and pass it back to Tiara to see if we have any questions, if we've even still got time for some Q&A, but um, I really do thank you all for joining and listening to me, and I hope to hear from you all soon. Thank you so much, Casey. It's great to hear um, those kind of social proof cases, and it is so fun when we have been at events in, a past, in the past to have teachers come up to us and say, look, I'm monitoring my students right from my phone. I can see exactly what they're doing. And I think co-teaching, that feature was released prior to remote learning, but it has become so much more relevant, especially with that, that hybrid learning use case that you talked about. Um, we actually do have a couple questions. Um, so first question is from Teresa Hinkle, and she is asking, if uh, if Dino allows the ability to take over a student computer? Great question. So currently, no, the Dino product does not allow teachers to take control of a student screen or computer. However, I'm really, really glad you asked that actually. This is super relevant. Um, however, our product team is actually working on a couple enhancements right now that are very close to that. So before the back to school season this year, or during back to school season this year, it should be ready by then, Dino is going to launch the ability to view all of the open web browser tabs on a student device. So currently you can only see the active one, but very soon you'll be able to see all of them, even if they're not active. And you'll also have the ability to actually close out tabs that you consider off task. So really, really exciting. Um, it will definitely give you some control over their devices for sure, but it's specific to seeing all of their open web browser tabs and then being to close out individual ones that you don't think are considered on task. And if I'm remembering correctly, those closing out of browser tabs, that data will also appear in the class history as a distraction that you defeated. So in Dino class history data, we currently track distractions defeated as the number of times that a given website or application has been blocked during a monitoring session. 
This then, the closing of the browser tabs, would add to that total tally. So again, you've always got an idea of just how much Dino is helping you keep students on task. And ideally, that's a number that should go down throughout the year as students are um, getting a little bit more mature with their digital citizenship. Great question. Yeah, and that's a really exciting feature that's coming out. Just to add a little color commentary to that as well, with what you said, Casey, earlier about providing feedback, that enhancement was came directly from user feedback that that was a feature that teachers would find really beneficial and useful in their classroom. That's also how we developed the device impact measurement module because administrators and tech coaches were telling us that they wanted that full view and complete usage data at the district level. So if you have feedback on how you're using Dino or potential enhancements that you would like to see. We always take those into consideration when thinking about future product enhancements and even content and resources that we can produce. Um, had a couple questions just about whether this uh, email, whether this recording will be sent out to people afterwards after the event. Doesn't look like we have any other questions related to co-teaching. I think, Casey, that's a testament to how thorough your presentation was. Um, but anyway, so what you can expect following this recording in this session, we will be sending out the recording to everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for the event and maybe wasn't able to attend live. If you are an existing Dino customer, we will also send you out a digital flyer that you can share with other teachers who might be interested in co-teaching or using Dino. And for every three referrals that you, that you get for teachers to subscribe to Dino, we're going to give you a $15 gift card. So we really want to get you to help spread the word. We also are going to have some exclusive co-teaching resources coming out. So they if you subscribe and if other teachers subscribe, they'll get access to those resources. If you are not an existing Dino user and would like to learn more about Dino, we'll also send you the recording along with some next steps and resources um, that you can use to get started with a free trial or see a full demo of the Dino product or get more information on a quote and, and next steps and implementation. So with that, I think that closes out our event today. Like I said, these will be recurring sessions on different Dino features and use cases. So we will have our next Lunch and Learn at the end of May um, with Casey as well. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you all there again, hopefully. Casey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks again for having me. This was fun. I look forward to next month. Yes, definitely. Thank you everyone for attending. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and stay safe. We'll see you next month.